Welcome to EHJ Today. I'm William Wines from Belgium and I'm delighted to be joined by Professor Keith Fox from Edinburgh University. William, great to see you. <laughs> Likewise. Keith, you have been um, awarded the Gold Medal of the ESC for outstanding services. Also, you have joined the small group of living legends of cardiology. That sounds really bad. It sounds like, uh, you know, I should be digging a grave at this stage. <laughs> I'm not sure. I think it's well deserved. Tell us a bit about your personal background. Well, it's, it's maybe a little unusual in that I was born in Zimbabwe and grew up in Central Africa, in Zimbabwe and then Malawi. And um, uh, we didn't have anybody in the family in medicine or, or science. My father was in the bank. And so uh, my introduction to medicine and science was unusual. I had uh, a biology teacher who came into the room with the textbooks for the British exams. And he said, hmm, throw them in the corner. If you're interested in those, read them, but come and do some projects. <laughs> so I guess how that, that's how it started. Yeah. So you're a true citizen of the world. I think once you had embraced uh, medicine and cardiology, you spent significant time doing research and also clinical work in the States, yes, did you? Yes, uh, I, I went to the States. Uh, I was in Washington University and, and Barnes Hospital, and it was a tremendous experience, very uh, stimulating, challenging, innovative. And, you know, I encourage our fellows to go to different countries around Europe and different continents because it challenges some of our preconceptions. And one of the things that I found worked more easily in the US than in Europe was people moving between clinical science and basic science. And that was really an exciting part because quite a lot of what I was doing was, was basic science. Did you consider embracing you know, a career in the United States or were you planning to come back to Europe anyhow? That was a, uh, a contentious issue because I went on a J-1 visa and then we were doing studies looking at uh, myocardial blood flow in isolated perfused hearts, in open chest animals, and in uh, pet systems. And we actually devised the original algorithms for the O15 water and some of the algorithms for looking at metabolism and perfusion in the heart. But uh, that's where we got involved in developing the models with the copper helix and the, uh, the thrombolysis studies. So converted from a temporary a visitor to in fact a permanent resident and then I joined the faculty in the US. Great, so when you moved to Europe, you became director of the clinical services and, and research at uh, Edinburgh University. First of all, I went to the University of Wales in Cardiff and I was there uh, for a while and was doing more uh, clinically related uh, projects. But after that, there were only a fairly limited number of chair positions in the UK. And one of these, by coincidence, came up in Edinburgh, which is where I went to medical school. And so that was a, a great opportunity. And uh, uh, my predecessor, who'd left the department a while, was, was Michael Oliver. And his interests were entirely different, <laughs> as you know. And it was quite a small department of about eight or nine people, with a couple, including a couple of PhDs and some technicians and a couple of administrative staff. But um, the, the fun thing for me is being able to uh, interact with colleagues across different basic science groups where we've got a common interest in the vascular biology and inflammation, so that we met together, I think the first meeting in my house in the evening, and said, we're gonna build an institute. We have no money, <laughs> but we have an idea. And we managed to get matching funding from the university after we got some competitive grants. So that's how it started. Wonderful. So looking back, um, what do you think were the main, main achievements in terms of, uh, of science and, you know, service to the population for clinical service? <laughs> You're overstating things. But you know, we all of us uh, try and make some incre incremental contributions. But uh, I can remember as a very new fellow, standing up at the uh, American Heart Association, presenting our work on melanoma TPA, yes. which was the first study that we actually published in science uh, on the thrombolysis in, in the dogs. And the first 
question I got was from a very eminent American pathologist whose name was very revered and he stood up and he uh, thanked me for the elegant presentation and he said, too bad thrombus in the coronary artery is a post-mortem artifact and he sat down. <laughs> so I was a bit stunned. Yeah, it's difficult to um, convince people when you come up with disruptive new ideas, isn't it? Yes. That go against the yes. established dogma. You, you, you're right. And then how do you, how do you encourage people to take the risk of a quantum step, because otherwise it's all incremental. Yeah. You know, we've seen things that are quantum steps at, at this Congress, some have worked and some have not. And one of the things we encourage our fellows to do is, okay, some will fail, but it's worth the risk. trying. Taking the risk, yeah, amazing, yeah. So you talked a lot about colleagues and young colleagues. Uh, you know, if you had uh, an advice to give to um, a young student who's considering perhaps going into business or, or medicine, would you encourage them to you know, end endorse cardiology or medicine at all in the changing world of today? I would say that by the time you're 40, if you're in business, you'll be bored or you'll be very rich <laughs> or both. But in cardiology and in cardiovascular science, mm -hmm. we're not bored. And I think it, the uh, facility to include both our clinical activities and the science is wonderful because it's innovative and one area feeds on the other. And that's what we learn from. And ultimately, if some of the work, you know, you've asked what work um, I uh, feel may have made a contribution, the, the work in understanding some of the mechanisms, the work in uh, thrombosis, in acute coronary syndromes, if that's made a small contribution, then that's uh, helpful. Indeed. May I ask you what are your personal plans for, for the future? Well, um, my personal plans are that we have a huge amount to do in understanding why uh, non-obstructive plaques rupture. So part of the personal plans includes uh, ongoing work that we have both in Edinburgh and elsewhere in looking at uh, the upregulation of inflammation how do, we, how, how do we identify these plaques and what are the characteristics that we may change? So that's part of it. Um, we have other studies that we're just starting or continuing with. Um, and uh, personally, uh, lots of things. Um, we enjoy hiking and biking and uh, exploring places, so lots to do. Thank you. This was a um, stimulating conversation as always. I think it's only appropriate uh, at the conclusion of this uh, short interview that I give the final word to our <laughs> new gold medalists. Well, I'm, I'm a bit embarrassed by it all, but it's really a privilege to be part of this. And, you know, it's exciting what we see through um, the European Society of Cardiology that, uh, you know, here's an innovative Congress that is, people are really coming together, which is terrific. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you.